Welcome to lesson 8.1 titled U Substitution. And for this course, this will be the last major technique that you're going to learn for integration, for finding antiderivatives. And where we're going to start, and you'll see soon why this is going to be necessary, we're going to start with a review of the chain rule for differentiation. So if we look on the first example, we have a function f of x defined as the quantity 7x to the 4th minus 3, all raised to the 5th power. And if we remember for chain rule, what we identified was an inside function. In this case, we have this whole 7x to the 4th minus 3, and this inside function is being raised to the 5th power. So we called that 5th power our outside function. And so we're dealing with a situation where we're differentiating a composite function, and our chain rule stated, the first thing we do is differentiate the outside function and multiply that with the derivative of the inside function. So on this first one, f prime of x equals the derivative of something to the fifth power was 5 times that something to the fourth power, in this case our 7x to the fourth minus 3, and then times the derivative of the inside function, in this case 28x cubed. And we could simplify from there. So 140x cubed times our inside function raised to the fourth. And when we did chain rule, we noted certain functions that are always chain rule problems. Any function we see being raised to a power. So even if I look at the example right below it, h of x equals square root of 2x minus 5. Remembering that certain words, particularly the word of, was something that alerted us to chain rule. Here, an inside function of 2x minus 5. Outside was that inside function being raised to a 1 half power. And our derivative would be 1 half our inside function to the negative 1 half times derivative of the inside, which was 2. And in this case, those would cancel each other out. I can move this negative power back down to the denominator and change it back into a root, and we get 1 over square root of 2x minus 5. Other functions that we noted as always being chain rule problems included our trig functions. So something like g of x equals sine of x cubed, and g prime became derivative of the sine, which was cosine of our inside function, times derivative of the inside 3x squared. And if you remember back and you feel comfortable with doing chain rule without having to write this inside-outside notation, that's fine. There's a reason I'm bringing it up again, and you'll see that very soon as we move into our big topic for this lesson. But we'll wrap up with this last example. Another function that we said was always going to be chain rule are exponentials and logarithms. In this case, looking at just an exponential, we have e to the tangent x, derivative of the outside, e to the anything, its derivative is e to that same power, times derivative of the inside, in this case, secant squared x. And what we want to investigate in this section is how do we reverse this process and integrate? If we have this large number of functions that generally require the chain rule to differentiate, it should follow that we're going to run into a lot of functions and in integration that came from applying the chain rule. And our process for doing this will be what's known as u substitution, or the reverse chain rule. And the goal of u substitution is to eliminate the chain rule from the problem. We want to make it not be an issue any longer. Step one, and this is the key, when integrating some function of x that's going to require this new process, identify that f of x resulted from applying the chain rule when we differentiated it. Which means what we're really going to be looking for, it's not so much I'm going to be looking for the integral of f of x dx, I'm going to be looking for something where we can clearly see that I have a composite function being multiplied with its derivative. The second step of this process will be to set g of x, or the inside function, equal to 
a new variable, u. So we're changing our problem from being a complicated function of x to what's going to be a simpler function of this new variable u. The third thing we need to do is we need to evaluate du, or derivative of that inside function that we identified in part two. And our final step, substitute u and du expressions into the integral and evaluate. And then finally find the antiderivative from there. One note to make, and you'll see it come up in our examples, we might need to mess around with our constants. The constants when we work through this process aren't always going to match up. And this was something that I actually alluded to back when we did integrals of trig functions. That was kind of your primer for this u-substitution process. And finally, it's not really another step we need to think about, but it's kind of the end product. Finish by turning back into a function of x. That's going to be the key thing. If we start with a function of x or of t, we want to end with a function of that same variable. This u that you see is just going to be an intermediate step to make that easier. So let's look on our first example. Here we have integral of 4x times quantity 2x squared minus 1, all raised to the third power, with respect to x. What we want to identify is that this had to have come from chain rule. We have an inside function raised to the third. We can probably already realize this had to have come from that same function being raised to the fourth, but our original inside function, which like I said, we're going to call u, equals 2x squared minus 1. Our step after that was to evaluate du, the derivative of this function. And the derivative of 2x squared minus 1 is 4x. And we're going to think of this kind of how we did implicit differentiation. We're going to say it's times the derivative of that x variable. So we're going to include a dx on the end of it. My next step was to substitute all of these u expressions into my original integral. So notice how u itself equals 2x squared minus 1. So this expression right here will no longer be 2x squared minus 1 to the third. That's going to be u to the third power. And du is equal to this entire 4x dx. This term out in front and this dx will be substituted out and replaced with a du. And that's what we're going to integrate, this u cubed with respect to u. And that's an easy enough antiderivative. It will be u to the fourth with a 1 fourth out in front plus c. Like I mentioned, we'll finish this up by turning this back into a function of x. This will actually be 1 fourth our u function to the fourth power plus c. And there is our antiderivative. Consider that if you were to take the derivative again, chain rule would apply, the 4 and the 1 fourth would cancel, we would end up with 2x squared minus 1 to the third, like we saw back in the original, times the derivative of the inside function, times this 4x, and everything matches up. For the next example, we have the integral of cosine of x times e to the sine x. And here's where, again, recognize the function that you know has always been a chain rule derivative, in this case, e to the sine x. So we know that exponent had to have been our original inside function. Differentiating this u, the derivative of sine is cosine of x. Hey, we'll bring in that dx. And substituting all of this in, our u will replace sine of x. So we will get e to the u. du will replace both the cosine x and the dx put together, these two pieces. Those will just turn into du. And that's what we are integrating. And the integral of e to anything is e to that same thing, with a nice plus c because it's indefinite. Turning back into a function of x, our original function, e to the sine x, plus some constant. Taking a look at the next one, we have the integral of 4x minus 1 over the square root of 4x squared minus 2x. And as you saw up top from our chain rule example is that square root, that's a good spot for us to look to find an inside function 
that could lead us to U substitution. So we're going to take R inside and say that it was this 4x squared minus 2x, which would make du 8x minus 2, and dx on the end. And for the first time, we're going to see something different come into this problem. Notice how our du is this 8x minus 2 times dx. And so if we think about making our substitution now, well, we'll get something over the square root of u. But notice we have a 4x minus 1 left over and a dx. This other expression will not substitute out the 4x minus 1. It's too large. In fact, it's twice as big. What I would like to see to make this other substitution and bring du into the problem is I would like to see this 4x minus 1 be 2 times bigger. The problem with that is I've now made the entire expression twice as big. Well, there's an easy fix to that. It's OK for me to multiply this by 2 and make my entire expression look like this. But I have to compensate for that times 2 that I brought in. And how I'll do that is by multiplying by the reciprocal. I'll put this 1 half outside to say I doubled the inside and I'm canceling it out with a 1 half on the outside. I haven't changed the overall value of the problem, but I have made it so that I can make my substitution. And so we'll reset our integral, having something over the square root of u, and the du will now substitute for this entire 8x minus 2 and dx that we see there. So we actually end up with du over the square root of u. And that's what we're taking the integral of with our 1 half out in front. And we'll do a slight rewrite on that to make it easier to integrate. We're going to have 1 half the integral, and we can rewrite this expression as u to the negative 1 half power. And integrating from there, we'll get our 1 half on the outside times u to the positive 1 half with a 2 out in front. And we'll just put 1 plus c on the very end of that. So putting this all together, the 2 and the 1 half will cancel. And subbing back in for our u, we'll get 4x squared minus 2x to the 1 half plus c, or just square root of 4x squared minus 2x plus c. And the last example here, the integral of 6x squared times cosecant of x cubed times cotangent of x cubed dx. Differentiating trig functions requires use of the chain rule, so it should be easy to spot that our inside function, our u, has to be x cubed. And so the derivative of u will be 3x squared dx. And notice we're not able to make our substitutions yet because we want a 3x squared, but we actually have a 6x squared. It's twice as big as what we want. Well, I can fix that by cutting it in half. But if I'm going to do that, I'm going to offset it with a times 2 outside my integral and reset the problem to be 2 times the integral of 3x squared cosecant x cubed cotangent x cubed dx. And now we're ready for our substitutions. Our u will replace every x cubed we see. So we'll have a u here, a u here. Inside our two trig functions, we'll replace the entire 3x squared dx with our du, and we are integrating with that times 2 on the outside, which will yield 2 times integral of cosecant times cotangent of any inside function is negative cosecant, in this case of u, and plus c. And substituting our original function back in, we will have negative 2 cosecant of x cubed plus c.